Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, everybody. It is Photo Joseph. It is the moment. And it is 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, which is when we do this show every weekday live. Unless, of course, I'm on an airplane that's kind of hard to do this thing from the air like yesterday. But other than that, we usually go pretty good. It's good to see you all today. Today's show is going to be a little a bit of a mishmash, just some catch up, little updates, a little this, a little that. Not like a one big topic. So... Let's just get started. As always, if you're watching live and you comment, please do type at Photo Joseph in front of the comment so that I can see your comment and I know that you've got, uh, I know that you've got a question for me and which uh, Eduardo Dog, I see you just put in a question in there. So I'll let you re-put that question in there with the at Photo Joseph in front of it. We're not going to do a separate commentary today. So just throw your questions in there anytime and uh, and we'll address them. Let's start off with a, a update. We got a buzz in my ear for some reason. My headphones are like doing something weird. Um, we got a little scammer update. So, oof, scam, long scam story. Not going to repeat all that right now. Uh, we will link to the full scam story, but the very, very Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest version is I was approached by a scammer. I knew he was a scammer. I took the bait anyway because it was fun. I got a bunch of money sitting in my account. Um, eventually told him to piss off. The money sat in my account for another week or so. Police came knocking at the door, said, so it turns out there was a stolen credit card used. I'm like, hey, hey I know this story. We chit chatted. It was fun. It was actually a really, really cool experience. Um, and then we're just waiting for the other shoe to drop, as it were, for the credit card company to decide that they want their money back. Well, that happened. And now I'm actually a little bit annoyed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to update you now because it's still not done. But the way this went down, this last part, kind of pissed me off. So I knew that from speaking with my credit card processor, which is uh, Intuit. I use Intuit QuickBooks Online for my, my bookkeeping and Intuit credit card processing, whatever it's called, for charges. So if I send you an invoice, you know, I can accept credit card. And after, the whole, after this whole thing started, I talked to them and said, hey, this is probably a stolen credit card. Um, they said I could, re, I could reject the charge, refuse it, but I'd have to pay a processing fee on that. I said, let's just wait and see what happens, which we did. So now the bank has challenged it and said that it was a fraudulent charge. It doesn't say stolen. On my, the email I got said fraudulent. And the, the, um, the credit card company, the processing company, had told me they wouldn't just take the money out of my account they would email me first, give me a chance to challenge it, and so on. So there's a process. Okay, cool. So I moved the money from my primary business account over to another account for safekeeping, make sure it didn't go anywhere. And, uh, and keep in mind, it's not, it was $2,500, by the way, was the charge. Uh, it wasn't the full $2,500 because the credit card processing fee takes, the company takes their fee out, which is like 43 bucks or something like that. Harsh, right? Move that over. You know, 2500 minus the 40 Okay, good. So that's all safe and sound. So then I get an email yesterday morning that says... <clears throat> um, there's going to be a charge back on the card you have until August 2nd to challenge it, challenge it by either emailing this below or, um, or calling this number, faxing, whatever. And if you do, if you don't dispute it, then just do nothing and, and the charge back will happen. The charge back meeting is going to come back out of my account. So I immediately emailed them using the email address they provided and said, Hey, uh, Oh, sorry. And on there, it also said, unfortunately, you're going to have to pay a $25 fee. And I thought, Ooh, that kind of sucks. That's not really how this is supposed to go. So I emailed them right away. I said, Hey, update. Here's the original case number. We talked before. This is what's going on. Um, obviously I really don't want to pay the $25 fee and I want to make sure I get the $40 processing fee back, the original one back. Well, the funds came out of my account last night. I'm sitting there on the couch and I get a push alert that $2,525 has just been taken out of my account. And I'm going, what? That wasn't supposed to happen yet. So I quickly moved the money back into there because now it's, you know, they took $2,500 of my dollars out, so I put their dollars back in. But they took the extra 25 and they haven't given back the 40 So I'm a little upset at that. And I emailed them right away and said, WTF, your email said I had until August 2nd. I replied immediately. Their autoresponder email says, we have two days to reply. I'm thinking, uh, hurry up, guys. Chop, chop here. The time's a ticking. And apparently the time ticked a little bit faster than expected because they just took the money out. So that's where it's at now. So as expected, I don't get to keep the money. Never did expect that. That was like that pipe dream. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Didn't really expect it. But um, a little annoyed that they did it sooner than they said they would. Took the $25, which they said they would do but haven't responded to my email saying, uh, that ain't cool, and haven't put the 40 back in. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. But that's the update. That's the latest on that. All right. Uh, let's see here. Abhishek says, Abhishek has a question. I have a suggestion. Oh, okay. A little out of topic. No problem. That's today. You should start uploading your should, your should start uploading very small to the point tutorial or commentary videos. This will help build your audience. Yeah. 
Dude, do you have any idea how much work I put into this as it is? I can't do a whole separate small mini videos. I do live training stuff on, I do small training videos for software that get uploaded to this channel, not on a regular basis. But uh, believe me, if I did this, plus what you're suggesting, this would be my full-time job. And um, unless you wanna start contributing thousands of dollars on Patreon, that ain't gonna happen. Thank you for the suggestion, but I put a lot of time and effort into this as it is. Uh, someone asked about overheating. Eduardo the dog says, uh, are you experienced? Eduardo the dog, you've got to put an at photo Joseph in front of the question so that I know it. I'm seeing it, but next time, please do that. Are you experiencing any overheating problems with the GH5? Hell no. No, no, no. GH5 is very, very well designed so that it does not overheat. Uh, I, I can't, for the GH5 specifically, I can't tell this story. This story is about GH4, but I know photographers have used GH4s, multiples of them, in 120 degree heat out in the desert in the Middle East all day long, no overheating problems. Take your Sony out in the snow and it'll overheat. Um, but that's that's what the GH4 is and the GH5 has an even bigger heat sink, uh, should be even better protected against that. I've had zero reports of overheating and I certainly haven't had it on, on mine. And I've shot, okay, not out in 120 degree heat, but I've used the camera in full sun on some seriously hot days, uh, you know, 100 degree weather days. Um, for an hour or so at a time and shooting full 4K and zero problems, none whatsoever. So there's the answer to that question. Um, David from Switzerland is confirming no overheating with the GH5 with yours. It's a beast, a real power horse. Agreed, it is. Uh, John Morby, yep, chargeback fees. That's exactly what they said it was gonna be. Uh, Marvin says, how much data do you use when live streaming with the Mevo? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. It's a 1080p signal, so that should be around four and a half megabit, but it could be higher, it could be lower. I don't think it tells me what the actual bit rate is. You know what I could do? Do me a favor, um, uh, Marvin, put that, or uh, yeah, Marvin, put that question in the comments on this show later, you know, after the, you know how it works after the show, you gotta, because this stuff doesn't get kept. Um, and what I'll do is I'll look at an old show done from the Mevo and I'll download the source file and see, and then that'll tell me the bit rate that it uses and we can do some math from there. That's a really good question though. Yeah, I don't know. Huh, interesting. Okay, uh, what else are we gonna do today? Um, workshop. I got a mini workshop this Saturday in the LA area in Riverside at this camera company called Image One Camera and Video. There it is. Look at that. It's on the front page. Things you can do with your camera that you didn't know, and it's gone. Um, if you don't see it on the front page, go to workshops, and then on workshops, go down to this Saturday's date, the 22nd, and the workshop is called Things I did not make the graphic. Things you can do with your camera that you didn't know. So the whole idea here is we're gonna talk about all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with your camera that might not have been expected. Like, oh, I didn't know that I could do that. And the topic, what have I listed here? I've listed, now this is not a Lumix workshop. I will obviously be using my Lumix cameras and perhaps some of the features I show will only be available on Lumix or will only be available on mirrorless or will only be available with your camera if you buy an accessory. But that's not the point. The point is to show, look, at all these cool things we can do with our camera that you might not have known about. So let's see, what do I have on the list? Um, slow motion, oh, here, uh, time lapse, slow motion animation, multiple exposures, creating unique looks before you shoot in-camera HDR, in-camera raw processing, wireless transfer of photos, uh, wired transfer of photos, how to use your camera as a webcam, uh, editing raw photos on your mobile device. There's a bunch of stuff. So those are some of the topics. And then we're doing a photo walk afterwards. So that's going to be fun. So this event is totally free. So if you are in the LA area and you would like to attend, totally free at Image One Camera, go to their website, Image One. And there must be a, a link on here, I guess, to register. Yeah, Google, iCal, export. Who's attending? Nine people are attending. Okay, excellent. Uh, I had no idea. There's got to be something on here. Oh, Kermit for Diego. Confirm RSVP. So there you go. So you can do that. So yeah, that'd be fun. Come on down and enjoy the party and do a photo walk. And, you know, photo walks could be fun and end anywhere, like the local watering hole. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. What else? Um, John Morris says, can you get it to make a cup of tea? Totally out of context. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sorry. Okay, next. Uh, let's see. Image One Workshop. Did that one. Talked about the scammer. Did that one. Unboxing. Okay, two things. <laughs> you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> These guys. <laughs> uh, 
the vest, the photo vest, the monstrous vest that I literally tore apart on the show because as I was putting it together, it ripped. They said, please do another review. We'll send you a new unit. So I did. I, well, I received it. Um, all I'm going to do right now is, I don't know if I'm going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole nother show on this. I mean, they're, they're asking a lot, honestly, to do a whole other show. Um, you may recall that it literally fell apart in my hands and my, I put it on, it was tough and it kind of ripped. They said, please be gentle with it. Photography gear is not meant to be gentle. I don't buy camera gear to coddle it. I buy camera gear to use it. My camera bags, all camera carrying devices must be, must be able to take a serious amount of abuse. And I mean, serious amount of abuse. Otherwise, what's the point? Okay, so let's, this looks a little bit different. It's got an extra little label on it, I think. I don't recall that being there before. Okay, so my big complaint, one of my big complaints was this Velcro thing, which I see this, they haven't changed the design. So when I was adjusting the shoulder straps by Velcro, I, I completely ripped the thing apart. They asked me to be gentle. Okay, let's see if, oh, you know what? Here, this is the one thing we're gonna test. We're gonna test that the clips actually hold. Because remember, that was it. These guys didn't hold and it turned out an eagle-eyed observer, which I think is, was Ryan, uh, the, the clips were not the same size. So you've got, you know, these guys. One of them was smaller, physically smaller. Like they attached the wrong one and it didn't stay. You put it in and it just popped out. So clearly not okay. This one is holding on better. All right, let's see, should I put this thing on? Something tells me this is gonna not feel good. Let's see here, oh, that's different. <laughs> this is like, oh, Ryan, I can't hear you. Say it again. Uh, Ryan's told me this is a totally different vest. I don't, is it really? I don't think so. It's just the other one had more parts. Ryan didn't think the other one had reflective. This one's got a zipper on the back. What's in there? Oh, that's for the rain cover. Oh, that's, was that the way that, was, did that do zipper thing before? I don't think it did. I think it was just a separate piece, which made it even more. The whole idea behind this apparently is it's a rain cover. You put, you carry your camera here with a rain cover over it. Um, this is made for like the smallest person ever. Okay, there, we're undoing that. Right, let's try to put this thing on again. Okay, here we go. I know it's now bumping up against the mic. All right, it still feels like I'm about to invade a small country. Now, if this thing had a bulletproof plate in it and was bigger, I'd feel like I could wear it, you know, somewhere you know, like a war zone, but I don't think that's the intention here. Um, I think, Ryan, that it's the second vest. Where's that supposed to go? Oh, that's supposed to clip on the side. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is like, talk about over, hugely over-designed. I'm sorry, you guys, the company that sent this to me, I'm sorry. Um, I told you I didn't love the product and you guys really wanted me to do another review on it. Um, I'm not, I'm not getting much better vibes than last time. It is still a massively huge over-designed thing. Let's pretend this is my camera. Let's see here. So the tripod mount goes on, which, as I recall as well, does not have a counter screw, right? It doesn't have a counter screw thing, so you can't, you know, the count, like you twist it one way, then twist the other one the other way, and it locks it in. This doesn't do that, which means you're kind of limited on, so yeah, so like right now, I need a lens. Is there a lens in here? Brian, grab me a lens, would you? Anything. Um, I'm limited, well, I guess it does slide in that way. Okay, so that goes in like that. Thank you, that'll work. This is a secondary one. I guess it goes on the side. So if you really want to have the, uh, that, I never did figure out what this extra strap is for because there's no built in. What is this? So the idea here is that you do this and then you do this. Good. Apparently this is for carrying a Canon 400 millimeter lens and keeping your bits and bobs dry as well. Excellent. Well, there you go. Okay, at least this one stays on, right? At least this one stays on. So I got, they fixed that. They fixed that. So I gotta give them credit that they fixed. This now stays on. Don't recall what these are for. I think maybe to attach to your camera, so if you drop it, 
but this part, okay. Oh wait, there's a release, aha. Sorry, I blew out the mic, didn't it? Quick, take a picture. Got it. Might be quicker to do this. If you like all, click. Click. Maybe once you get used to that, that kind of is quickish. Yep, but see now it's already coming off. This spins around a couple times. This design sucks. Still sucks, sucked before, still sucks. I'm, I'm getting this thing off me, and it's hot. <sighs> Gentlemen from the company, I told you I would look at it again. I have. Um, it is better than last time. The clips actually stay on. This, this way of adjusting the shoulder straps, here's what you have to do. You have to pull this out, figure out the right length of that, and then put it, so even if I needed, if I was big, and then all it would have is just a little bit holding onto it. That would be, that would not be confident. I would not have confidence in that. Ryan thinks that the belt might be for using the side attachment without the vest. So like the largest spider holster ever built, I guess. So you take this and this. Attach this to this, I guess. I mean, there's more Velcro on this thing. I... If you need to mount it here and you like having a big, huge, heavy, robust thing and you want a rain bag that is sufficient to cover your camera and twins, then I think this might work. Otherwise, I think it's a bit overkill, over-designed, way too much stuff, way too heavy, way too hot. Sorry, that's my assessment. Okay, next company. This is, you know, you get it, you do a bad review, and then suddenly everybody wants you to do a bad review. So this company, I believe, I haven't even opened it yet, as you can see, um, I believe this is a microphone. I think a wireless mic, I don't recall, but they emailed me and said, hey, can we send you this? And I looked to see if it was the same company, it didn't seem to be. And, uh, I, you know, I, I love wireless mics. Grr, always need more. So I said, sure. So this is just going to be an unboxing. I'll play with it. I'll let you know if it's any good. Uh, uh, John Warby says, can we send him something from Ann Summers' Victoria's <laughs> Secret to tell him the camera support? Do you reckon we can get Photo Joseph to model it on air? I will get someone mildly more attractive than me to model it on air. How's that sound? Um, oh, dual-headed microphone. That's what this is. Okay. All righty, all righty. Okay, so this is from, a, wait a minute. It is the same company. No, is it? Has to be. Okay, they got the same font. So I don't have a close-up camera here. They're using the same font. This one's called Omlite, or Comlite, Omlite, and it's the Co-Master. This is the Comica, Comica, same C. Comlite.com. Come on, give me a URL. Give me a URL. Give me a URL. No URL. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's the same company. All right. It says dual headed microphone for smartphone, camera, or GoPro. The model is the CVM D02. Dual headed mic for two way auto recording. Metal mic for super interference. I sh you not. It says metal mic for super interference. Guys, get a native English speaker to write your marketing copy. That is the exact opposite of what you want. High quality silica gel material. Isn't that the stuff that you stick in there so it absorbs the moisture? Um, universal for smartphone, camera, or GoPro. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see if it is a TRRS head uh, plug on it, because if it isn't, then it ain't universal. All right, good Lord, that's huge. Um, okay, oh, all right. Oh, okay, so they got, ah, okay, there's the universal part. Okay, so it comes with a TRS adapter, and it comes with a mini USB. So what, uh, is that micro or mini or whatever that mini USB, I think that is. So I know, oh, that says for GoPro right there on it. Okay, cool. 
That's just for GoPro. This one says for smartphone. Excellent. Okay, that's good. And two microphones. Good Lord. Um, whoa, that is long. Okay, sweet. Good. Well, you need that, right? If you're going to do like a two camera interview, mics are a little, little chunky, but thick cables mean in theory, less interference. That's nice. Okay. And then your standard plug that'll go into your camera or comes with a plug adapter for your TRS. All right, cool. All right. Well, we got something. I will test this and I will let you guys know what I think. I have zero idea what this thing costs because they just called me and said we're sending it to you. I like how it's got a color like red. Ooh, you got the red model and there is one little thing of red there. <laughs> I guess if you got multiples going into multiple, you want to track, I don't know, but cool. So a wired dual headed microphone could be very, very handy for sure. As you all know, I do my, when I do two person interviews, I've got two smart lav plus mics that go into a, it's all made by Rode, go into a little splitter deal so you can put in two microphones into that and then that goes into an extension cable. So this is kind of all in one. Um, and because it's two leads all the way to here, instead of, it, that means that I don't have to be right next to my interviewee, that we can be farther apart. Cool, oh, I look forward to testing that out. Oh, what else is in here? Oh, little uh, dead kittens, excellent. And the adapters, cool. All right, guys, well, Comica, Comica, which is, a Appropriate because this is the week of Comic Con. Um, just I wish I could tell if it was the same company or not. That'd be fun. But seriously, metal mic for super interference. Not what we want. We don't want super interference. So hopefully that is not what that means. It comes with a nice little case. Always like that. And a manual. All right, let's see here. Uh, questions, comments, things flying by. Let's see here. <laughs> SRO Digital saying save us from Investigate. I know, I'm sorry, you guys had to watch that. <laughs> Uh, they've not fixed the camera attachment point. No, they have not. Zero digital. That has not been fixed. Uh, Trevor says, are these guys trolling you, right? Because that would be absolutely brilliant. Like Andy Kaufman level stuff. They should just keep sending bad products. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to make much on affiliate sales if I keep reviewing bad products. But hey, it is what it is. Um, uh, please... <laughs> No, they are up. Uh, Trevor says, uh, or SR Digital says, Ryan, please tell the company not to send another one now during the live show. That's funny. John Marby, can we send? Oh, we already read that. That was, that was fantastic. Tony Hill says, hi, guys, having problems downloading video seven in chapter three of J5 training keeps coming up access denied. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. That's uh, my fault then. I probably didn't. Ryan, please write that down. We'll fix it after the show. Um, hey, speaking of the GH5 training, Let's uh, let's just throw that guy up there again. So as you know, as you probably know, as you might know, we are wrapped. It is completely 100% shot and done and loaded and in the can and all those expressions and phrases. And it is in final editing right now. Uh, the last batch, is, I just, I got another batch to review last night, which I will be doing as soon as the show is over. Uh, we, we have committed, <laughs> we have committed, I know it's a month and a half late, but we have committed to Linda to deliver by the end of July. So it's a month and a half after the initial date. That's life in production sometimes. Overcommit and underdeliver. No, that's the wrong way it's supposed to go. Anyway, um, but it's coming together. It's so, mm, I love it. It's coming out great. And for those of you who have pre-ordered it, thank you. You can still do a pre-order because it's not officially done yet. Until the last video is uploaded, it is not done, which means you can still get it at a discounted price, 40% off. So if you're thinking about it, don't wait too much longer because the price will be going up at the end of the month. Or if I happen to get it done sooner, <laughs> if it happens to get done sooner, then it'll go up even sooner. But that's that. Um, and Tony, thank you for telling me. I will look into that video file. It's every time I upload a file to Amazon S3 servers where they're stored, each one you have to change the permissions on it. And that one might have just gotten skipped or forgotten or something. So we'll, we'll fix it out. Um, Xcube 720 says, unrelated. It's all unrelated and that's okay. Can you compare the image stabilization of the G85? I don't have a G85 uh, versus the GH5. They both have dual image stabilization. Okay, you're right. They both have dual. The GH5 has dual... IS2, right? Isn't that, it's the version two. So it should be, oh, crap, I don't remember. Is it a, a half a stop or a full stop? I think it's a half a stop better. I might be wrong on that. I might be wrong on that. But yeah, you're right. They both have dual stabilization. The GH5 is newer. I don't have a G85, unfortunately. So I can't just do a side by side. Um, I can look at the specs for you, but like I said, I think it's a half or a full stop even difference. What I will say, having not used the G85, what I will say about the GH5 stabilization is it's freaking amazing. It really is, especially, you know, like I did the show a while ago, we'll link to it here, with the long lens, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, 
that's an 800 millimeter equivalent, hand holding 800 mil. It's like, what? It's incredible. The IS is insane on these things. And it's dual because it's in the body and in the lens. And the two together work together and make it, this is a GX8, by the way, uh, work together to make it even better. So you got, instead of one thing shaking, they're like both counter, it's remarkable. Crazy science, works really well. Um, SRO Digital says, I finally pre-ordered the GH5 training. Thank you, my friend. You convinced me, just need to get the camera. <laughs> hey, if I can convince you to buy the training, you don't even have the camera, that's pretty awesome. Which is worth pointing out, even if you're a Lumix shooter, not a GH5 shooter, but a Lumix shooter, you will still get a massive amount of useful information out of the training. And even if you don't shoot Lumix, you'll still get quite a bit of training. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't tell you as a first stop, that's where you should go to get your training, uh, but you will learn a lot about cameras in general. You'll obviously have to find, where's that feature on my camera? Oh, it doesn't have that. Maybe it's time to upgrade to a Lumix. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's, there's a ton of information. If you're not a GH5 shooter, but you are shooting Lumix, the course is, I don't know, what I've said like 75, 80% still valid to you. So yeah, worth looking at. Um, okay, so we got that, we did that. What's next on my list? Unboxing. Um, oh, okay, let's do this. Live training today. I am doing a live training today on Affinity Photo for iOS. We're doing tone mapping. We did tone mapping slash HDR last week on Affinity Photo Mac OS. Now we're gonna do the same thing on iOS and see what the differences are. So do check that out. The podcast, uh, one day late because we ended up having to record late, but tomorrow morning we'll release the latest edition of the Photo Apps podcast. Maybe we'll get it up today at some point, who knows? We'll just get it out when we can. But it's all shot and edited and ready to go. It's Adobe Spark. If you are not familiar with Adobe Spark, they are a trio of apps for your mobile device. Uh, do video, basic video, not video editing, that's the wrong word. It's like a video assembly, visio montage, uh, little mini web page kind of things. And one of the coolest ones is this layout tool for doing, uh, taking pictures, putting text on top, and basically doing marketing promo pieces that you would put onto Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So Adobe Spark, watch the podcast. It, uh, it was fun, that was a good episode. And that, was, uh, that will get released at some point later today. So that's that. All right, so we check that off, and I check that off, and I check that off. Oh, look at that, I covered everything. Ooh, it's good to have a checklist. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, Estro Digital says, I agree. Just try the 100 to 400 on a GH3. I'm assuming you mean the GH5, and it is fantastic. Or maybe you did put it on a GH3, in which the 100 to 400 has its own stabilization built in, which works great. But if you put it on a body that supports dual IS and you get both together, it's phenomenal. Uh, Trevor says, fun question. I still hear people say the GH5 isn't a compelling upgrade from the GH4. I, yeah, yeah. Originally I agreed, but after using it for three plus months, I disagree now. Any feelings? Uh, yeah. Okay. 60p, 4K 60p internal, 8-bit, 420. Okay, that's major one, one. 10-bit, 30p, 10-bit, 30p, 422 internal. Hello, kind of a big deal. Uh, 422, 10-bit, 60p to ProRes when paired up with an Atomos Ninja Inferno, remarkable, right? That's insane. 10-bit 422, you add that in Prolog, Prolog, Vlog, 10-bit 422, that's like, that's incredible. I've shown some content from here, we'll link to that up here. I showed some content of playing with that. It's an insane, that's insane. So there's just, just that alone makes the camera worth the upgrade. Uh, if you're doing slow motion, 1080p up to 180 frame per second, can't do that on the GH4. Um, far faster autofocus for still photography and video. I know the video isn't, autofocus still isn't fantastic. We'll just leave it there, but it is way better than it was on the GH4. Um, for still photography, it is phenomenally fast and accurate. 6K photo mode, 30 frames per second at uh, 18 megapixel. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Um, what else? What are some of the other biggies? Better waterproofing, better freeze proofing. So if you're working in inclement weather, it's a better camera. Overall layout, oh, the new joystick on there is kind of nice if you like that sort of thing. Um, beefier, sturdier body. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal upgrade. Phenomenal upgrade and all counts. I can't imagine why anyone would say otherwise. Honestly, I mean, I really don't. It's just so many things about it have been improved. Okay. Uh, Tim says, I have a Linda account. Uh, will that be training be the exact same on Linda? Yes. Yes, so it, worth mentioning again, this GH5 training course is going to lynda.com. They will be getting it at the end of July. <laughs> we have to stick to that now. They have to run through their Q&A, so I don't know, Q&A, QA, so I don't know how quickly they'll get it up on the library, but they will, they will take it as it is, and they 
they might come back and say, hey, we need you to change something or add something, but that's not expected. Um, all the the call-outs, I forget what they're called, but you know, those little call-outs and like things are circled on the screen or text things that come across the bottom, those are all using their templates. So the videos that you buy and download are will be exactly the same as the ones that go up on Linda. And if Linda asks for a change because something was wrong, then of course that will go out to both sides. If they ask for a change for something that's just Linda, like, I don't know, change the font on this or something, uh, that probably wouldn't go out to both sides. But point is that, yes, it is the same training on both. The advantages, just if, if you're kind of on the fence of what to do, advantages of Linda is, of course, you don't have to pay any extra. You get it included in your $25 a month subscription. Um, you can also stream it when you're on Linda, which means you can stream it onto any mobile device anywhere, anytime you got an internet connection. Um, and you can even cache it, right? If you're on your mobile device, you can say download, cache, you can watch it on a plane or something. So that's all from Linda. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, of Linda is that if you if you cancel your subscription, you no longer have access to it. So there's that. Um, if you want to download it, own it, have it forever, then that's why I'm selling it. So you don't have to worry about a monthly subscription. You just download it and off you go. So at full price, right, it's, a, it's the cost of four months of a Linda subscription. So if you figure that you'll watch the video as much as you want in four months and never reference it again, don't buy it from me. Go, go sign up for Linda. Uh, you'll get tons of other training in there as well for that 25 bucks a month. Linda is awesome. I love them. Massive, massive props to lynda.com. And it's L-Y-N-D-A.com, by the way. And let's just do this. Let's throw this guy up there. Here's one of my other Linda trainings, just so you know what else is up there. I got a ton of stuff up there, right? I got my DIY photography series. I've got my low light series. I've got my macro and close up. I've got my photo 101. I've got my uh, Linda product photography. So tons and tons of stuff on lynda.com from me and obviously a ton of other photographers. So I always, always recommend that, but if you want to own the project, then you just buy it for me to get to download. So either way, it is all the same to me. I am happy either way. Marvin says, is it possible to change the background from gray to another color in post? Are you, are you talking about my, this show, my, this background? Is that what you mean, Marvin? If that's what you mean, you key, not really, because I mean, it, this would not key cleanly. If I wanted to do a background that could be keyed out, then I'd want to do a blue or a green screen, but I also have to have more distance. This wall is right here. This is close. So I've talked about this before. When I first built this studio, the wall that's behind this, I painted green for green screening. Thought this was going to be a brilliant way to do it and then realized that it was too close to me. I was getting spill of green over my shoulders, hair, onto the tabletop. And then guess what? You punch a hole in the green and suddenly you got holes everywhere. It didn't work out so well. Um, is that what you mean? Estro Digital is confirming it was your GH3 that you put that 100 to 400 on. Cool. I love that. New lens, old body, works together beautifully. Very nice. <sighs> All right. Anything else? Um, ba -ba -ba uh, Warren says, when will we see more drone video? Do, plan on getting, do I plan on getting the Mavic Pro? Um, when will you see more drone? I don't know. I took it to LA. I really wanted to fly it there, but I never had a chance. And then I thought, oh, I'll flood out of my hotel window. <laughs> but if you saw my Instagram post yesterday, it was like I was facing the runway. Could not fly. Bad idea. So now I haven't flown it. Um, I flew a bunch over 4th of July. I should show some of that footage. I, I got to like assemble something with that. I don't know. I was just goofing off. I'm still learning this thing, but I'm getting better at it. The last weekend, I took it up into the forest where I, I was out for a walk, out for a hike with my kid, and I flew it low and I put it into tripod mode and um, flew it kind of along the path nice and slow. It looked really good, except that my kid kept wanting to grab it. He's like, ooh, runs up to it. Whoa, pull up. But, you know, two year olds. But yeah, I'll do more stuff with the drone. I'm loving it. Do I plan to get a Mavic Pro? No, I don't plan to right now. My my expectation, my original plan was always to wait for the Mavic Pro, Mavic 2, right? Yeah, for the Mavic 2. That's what I thought I would do. Mavic came out. I was really excited about it. When I was ready to buy one, they were on four-month back order or something, and I went, oh, forget it. And then the Spark came out, and I was about to buy it, but then didn't because there's only 1080p and a 2 axis gimbal. And then a month later or a few weeks later, I get an email from B&H that says they're in stock, and I go, well, okay. I'll get it. So glad that I did. Love, love, loving it. Obviously, it's limited compared to the Mavic, but it's a phenomenal first drone. Um, I don't even know that I will buy the physical remote, the the joysticks on it, because I'm getting pretty good with just the phone. I know I don't have the range. I would obviously like to have more range, but I kind of feel like if I'm going to spend the money, I would rather just put that towards an, an upgrade. So we'll see. We will see. Um, no plans right now. It's just, you know, I'm babbling about what I'm thinking. Uh, Marvin says, FYI, cheapest and reliable GPS follow me quadcopter, CG035. Worth a check out if you can get B&H to loan you one. It only costs less than $150. I want to look at that. Let's see. Oh, see, now you're going to really get me some trouble. Get me all started on all kinds of 
quadcoptery fun stuff. It's gonna be fun. It is fun. It really, it's so much more fun than I expected it to be. Would you say CG035, CG035? No results. You sure that's right? CG, I'll try GC. Let's just see if that gets me anywhere. GC. Nope, still no results. Uh, please confirm, Marvin, I'm going to type in follow me quadcopter. Follow me quadcopter. 3DR solo, that's $300. They're out of business now, aren't they, 3DR? Um, UniC, DJI Phantom, nothing at that price point. Maybe they don't sell it on B&H. Uh, let me just try a quick regular Google search, and then we're going to jump out of that. CG035, CG035. Okay, yeah. Actually, they don't, they don't have that on, uh, on B&H. But here it is on eBay. $121. Uh, and there's a YouTube link, which um, I can't pull up here, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, that's cheap. I mean, that is really cheap, but... Yeah, I mean, it's obviously not, it can't possibly be as good as the DJI, right? As far as stability, uh, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Do I really want to go down that route of really getting into these things? Who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> Marvin says, my son has recorded a set of videos on a gray background and the client wants to change it. I see. Now I understand. Yeah, that's, that's tough, man. Because you can't key it. You can't key it. I mean, you could try. If the person's not wearing anything any remotely near gray, you can certainly try. Use the same tools you would use for green screening. It's just called a keyer. But I wouldn't count on getting good results off of a gray background. You could, okay, here's a suggestion. Let's, I don't know what the interview's like. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, a person in the middle with a gray like I have here, person's off to the side, whatever. But maybe what you could do is do a, a gradient color correction right? Do like a gradient across and do a color shift on that. It's not going to be a hue shift because there's no hue in the gray, so it'd have to be a tint, but you could add a tint to that, and so you could add a splash of kind of a reddish, bluish something off to the sides, but as soon as you got to keep it away from your subject or they're going to go funny looking. So you could try something like that, but that's tough. Clients got to figure these things out in advance. Sorry about that. That's sort of digital saying, buy the remote. <clears throat> I know probably will. If you buy the remote, you're training yourself for the controller of the Mavic when you get it. No, I know. I know that. Yeah, I get that. I do get that. Um, I'm just trying not to spend more money on this. What type of photography do you do for more external works? Uh, you just mean commercially professional photography that I do outside of this stuff? Commercial and portraiture mostly. Um, and then travel, but it's hard to get paid for that. Check the YouTube video for the drone reviewer. Gives it a serious trial. Okay, Marvin, I will watch that. Uh, Ryan, please grab that URL. And, um, and we'll check it out. Okay. That's it. That turned into a longer show than I thought it would be. Okay, we got everything. Um, so, again, if you're in the L.A. area, do check out this Image One workshop this weekend, July 22nd, 1 to 5 p.m. That's including the time for the photo walk. And like I said, we'll probably hang out afterwards because that's always fun. And, uh, and yeah. Just if you're LA, come, come, come join us. That'll be fun. SkateTube saying, what type of photography has more success in your opinion? Oh, that's, that just all depends on you. <laughs> you. Someone could be super successful taking pictures of knives and that's all they do and they're the best in the world at it and they're going to be successful. There's, there's no, oh, easy track to success in photography. That much is for sure. It's easier to get portrait work. I'll tell you that much. It is easier to get portrait work because you can start at super low rates and get your friends and family, whereas corporate commercial work, you kind of need big companies to pay you big money to do it. Um, so it's certainly easier to do portrait work, but that's that. Okay, let's get out of here. Take care of yourselves, guys. What, uh, what is today? Wednesday? Thursday? Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, right? I think that's right. It's Wednesday. Excellent. So we got a couple more days in the week. We'll do a couple more shows. We'll come up with something good for the next couple ones. Um, I had something else in mind set aside that I was going to do. I don't remember what it was. I want to I want to tear apart the set my studio back up into my workspace for doing this show out there, but I need to leave the set built for the GH5 training in case my editor goes, "Ooh, we need a pickup of this." I can't tear it down. I was really excited to tear it down this week, and I realized I really can't do that until he's done editing, just in case there's something because that would suck to take everything down. Then he goes, "Oh, there's we lost the camera wasn't rolling on this shot or we lost it. Whatever. I got it. So I got to leave the set up." 
Yeah. I want to get my new, I want to get the new um, Black Magic camera up and running and working out there, but uh, got to get that thing set up. Um, and Estro Digital saying, is it Mevo Friday this week? I love how my my Friday to go out and do my own thing has become Mevo Friday. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, yes, yes, I do plan on bailing out of here and going and doing something else on Friday. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ryan's going to start putting that in the title. It's Mevo Friday. That's good. I like it. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.